הגיוני עוזיאל, השקפה. גדלות בתורה, יש בה כמה מרכיבים. מרכיב הידע, שהיום בזמננו, לאור הטכנולוגיה והמאגרים המבושבים, איבד קצת מערכו, זה מרכיב אחד. מרכיב שני, זה עומק התפיסה וההבנה. ועוד מרכיב נוסף, ולדעתי הוא מרכזי, זה הראייה המרחבית. להסתכל ברוחב על הצרכים של הציבור ולתת מענה הלכתי. touching film and uh, this is the first time he saw this film and he was moved and touched even though you know there were several times and I think probably a lot of us who know Rabbi Amsalam were watching the film and saying I wonder what's on his mind because it almost sounds like he uh, lived this film he lives the ideas here but he was very touched by it and uh, Rabbi Uziel he you know recognizes of course that Rabbi Uziel was an incredible Talmud Chacham was a great great rabbinic leader and scholar. He wrote 10 volumes of some of the most brilliant responsa in Jewish law. He wrote several volumes that have been titled Hegione Uziel, which talk about Jewish philosophy, um, modern issues, uh, issues of a wide range of topics. And that essentially, to be a rabbi, to be a rabbi that's considered an authentic, real rabbi, there's three elements that you have to really combine in a creative way. One is knowledge, a wide range of knowledge, something that Rabbi Uziel had. You have to have a wide range and amount of knowledge. Number two is not only to know, but to understand, to know how to apply that knowledge. Not only to say, I know that it's quoted here and here, but to be able to read, analyze, understand, and apply the learning. That's number two. And number three, which is really a, a, a quality that's very difficult to have, is to have a wide-ranging vision. Not to turn the Torah into something narrow, but to turn it into something where you see a full picture, and you see the needs of the community, of the people, of the entire nation, in the case of Rav Uziel, and use that knowledge and that ability to apply that knowledge for everyone, not only for a very specific population. This is what makes a rabbi a complete rabbi. I think we can add two points. The first point is the truth of his own. The good points of his own. The truth of his own. The truth of his own. He didn't want to go to the city of the city. He didn't want to live in the city. Things והדבר השני זה המנהיגות. אפשר להיות גדול בתורה, אבל מנהיגות זה משהו אחר. מנהיגות לא בוחרים, היא נוצרת מאליה. העוצמה לסמן מטרה, להשתכנע שהמטרה אמיתית וללכת איתה, זה מרכיב מאוד מיוחד. והרב עוזיאל, בגיל 14 יצא לפרנס את משפחתו ולמד תורה ביחד. לא בגלל שהוא יצא לפרנס את המשפחה הוא לא נהיה גדול בתורה, לא נכון. הוא נהיה מנהיג, מנהיג שכולם הכירו, הוקירו והלכו לאורו. There are two others that we saw specifically and perhaps uniquely in Rav Uziel. One was his humility. The fact that when we say he was a tzaddik, a real righteous person, this was an authentic part of his character. We saw the humility of his refusal to move to a beautiful home or apartment. Uh, we saw that he was truly a humble individual in his heart, in his soul, and this came out in his persona. And this is probably why he was so endearing to so many. 
And then the fifth trait is that of leadership. And this is perhaps even the most difficult. You could be a tremendous scholar, an incredible Talmud Chacham, wide range of knowledge, but it doesn't necessarily make you a leader. Leadership is something that you're born with. And Rabbi Uziel was a naturally born leader. And incredibly, the fact that at the age of 14, when he was orphaned, he went out to work. It didn't stop him from continuing to study Torah. The fact that he went out to work and continued his Torah studies is probably why he grew to become such a great leader and to understand civic life and Torah life and bring them together because of his experiences. This is something that was ingrained within. And this is arguably the most important trait he had was that of a leader that rose to such prominence and to such an incredible leadership role. A Jewish father or a Jewish grandfather or grandmother descendant, but they themselves are not Jewish according to halakha because their mother is not Jewish. Such an individual status in halakha is very different than the non-Jew who comes from two non-Jewish parents. Such a person comes from Zerah Israel, is a descendant of the nation of Israel in a certain fashion. Rabbi Amsalam took this concept and these words Zerah Israel from the writings of Rabbi Uziel, investigated them in depth, wrote about them, and gave them a much larger perspective. We saw in the film about Rabbi Amsalam when he spoke of when they spoke about 400,000 Jews from the former Soviet Union in Israel today who are of Zerah Israel and that this is one of the, the, the quote-unquote conversion crisis that we talk about in Israel. If they followed Rav Salam's book, this would be solved overnight. Uh, it would be a very, very beautiful and halachic solution. And uh, he feels, in this sense, that perhaps he was not a direct student of Rabbi Uziel, never studied with him directly, but he's very proud to, uh, to, to, to continue his mode of thought with this uh, important book. And he's soon going to be publishing now another book that deals also in more depth uh, in, this, in these questions. <laughs> אבל מנהיגים בסדרי גודל כאלה מעטים המה? אני מרגיש שאני צריך להזכיר באותו המעמד גדול אחר, שהוא גם כן לא מוכר. אבל לא שומעים הרבה על הרב עוזיאל. אתם יודעים, יש קצת אופנות. דור חדש בא, דור ישן, נשכח. קוראים לו הרב יוסף משש, זכר צדיק לברכה. בן דודו של רבה של ירושלים, רבי שלום משש. הם, הוא מזכיר לי גם את הרב עוזיאל, בתפיסת העולם, בפסיקה, במנהיגות, בצדקות. למדתי תורה אצל רב אחר, שאני מאוד אוהב ומאוד מוקיר, אבל לפעמים שני הרבנים האלה, אני מרגיש שהם הרבנים שלי. כי... בסופו של יום שואלים אותי הרבה פעמים בעולם החרדי, אז מי הם הרבנים שלך? אז אני אומר להם, הרמב״ם הוא הרב שלי, הרב עוזיאל הוא הרב שלי, הרב משש הוא הרב שלי, אבל אומרים לי, אתה לא הכרת לא את הרמב״ם ולא את הרב עוזיאל ולא את הרב משש, אתה לא ראית אותם, אני לא צריך לראות אותם, רק צריך לפתוח את הספרים שלהם, להתבונן בתורתם ולהבין את הדרך שצריך ללכת בה. <coughs> אני מתנצל שאני לא מעריך, יכלתי עוד לדבר הרבה, אבל אני צריך מכאן ללכת לשדה התעופה לנסיעה. אז אני מתפלל, אני קודם כל מודה לידידי הרב בוסקילה, לכל החברים מהמרכז הספרדי שבאמת עושים כמה פעולות שמנענעות את מטרי הלב, מאוד חשוב. ונתפלל שזכותו של הרב עוזיאל גדולה, תנחה אותנו, תעזור לנו, לכולנו, ושנעשה רק דברים טובים. תודה רבה.
Uh, I'm just going to translate, and then we'll take just a few questions from the audience. Um, yeah, this is no other I promise you I'll get to the airport on time. <laughs> um, rabbi wanted to mention just another rabbi. You know, a lot of uh, tremendous Talmudei Chachamim, you know, the generations go and they get forgotten, and he mentioned another rabbi, Rabbi Yitzchak, um, uh, Rabbi Yosef, excuse me, Rabbi Yosef Mashash, who was the uh, cousin of the chief Sephardic rabbi of Yerushalayim, right? And he was also, uh, much like Rabbi Uziel, someone who was humble, who was an author of many Shelot and Shuvot and works of Jewish thought. And Rabbi Amsalam studied with another rabbi who he loves very much, who was his rabbi. But uh, very often when he's asked by people in the, you know, in the different rabbinic circles that he walks, so who are your rabbis? Who are your teachers? So he says, uh, the Rambam, Maimonides, uh, was, is my teacher, is my rabbi. Rabbi Ziel is my rabbi. Rabbi Mashash was my rabbi. And, um, but they say, you know, you didn't study with Maimonides. That's impossible. And you never studied with Rabbi Ziel, and you never studied with Rabbi Mashash. How do you call them your rabbis? He said, in the world of Torah, when you're a, a true student, uh, yes, it's a great zuchut, it's a great uh, merit to have studied directly with an individual, but you don't have to. Because if you really truly study their works, their books, their writings, and you become a student of theirs that way, that's why he feels uh, able to connect to the teachings of these rabbis, and not only connect to them, but also to bring them to life. And uh, he thanks all of us, the Sephardic Educational Center, for what we're doing, the activities um, that we're part of. And uh, we feel very privileged that a few years ago, uh, Rabbi Amsalam lectured in our center, in, uh, in our courtyard, actually, that's being remodeled and beautified now. And I should just point out, by the way, that uh, in the very beginning of the film, they mentioned the yeshiva called Yeshiva Tiferet Yerushalayim, where Rabbi Uziel was uh, a rabbi. Yeshiva Tiferet Yerushalayim, which was meant to be until another yeshiva came and replaced it and kind of overtook it, was meant to be a yeshiva that would train the type of rabbis that we're speaking about who are traditional, modern, all at the same time. Yeshiva Tiferet Yerushalayim was located in the building that we today call Sephardic Educational Center in the old city of Jerusalem, and that's where Rabbi Uziel uh, first taught. It was uh, in the upstairs part. Downstairs was the Sephardic Talmud Torah, and upstairs was the yeshiva. Um, so it's a deep connection that we have. You should also know that in this film, the son of the following chief rabbi, Rabbi Tzach Nisim, uh, his son who was interviewed, Moshe Nisim, uh, he's a very close friend of the Sephardic Educational Center. He's actually our legal counsel for many years. He was Minister of Justice of the State of Israel. So we feel a deep bond to this film as a center. We feel a deep bond uh, to Rabbi Amsalem for what he represents today. Let's take a few brief questions. Uh, no long uh, speeches, but qu brief questions if you have for us. When we'll never have to say Sephardi or Ashkenazi again. Yes, yes. Well, we should always be concerned. I'll, I'll take the position to answer that because Rabbi M. Salem doesn't really like to deal with those kind of security questions. He actually said last night in a gathering that we were at that uh, the greatest security questions that he cares about are the fabric of internal Israeli society. You know the. You know, there are generals who deal with, and, you know, ministers of defense, and uh, to his credit, as opposed to other politicians who like to think that they know and have an answer to everything about everything, he says, you know, I let the generals deal with that. I'm dealing with, you know, the internal problems of Israel, which are no la less of a threat. You know, we're very concerned with that, I know, because we see it and it's an existential threat. Like I mentioned last night when he was speaking, the Talmud tells us that the first two times we had a Jewish state, we lost it not because of the bombs coming from Hezbollah or Hamas, but because of what things we did wrong. 
that we were weak as a people internally, we were a corrupt society, there was hatred and divisiveness. The Talmud says that's what brought down our state. That's what he's trying to prevent from happening by trying to unify the people. Yes? Um, not knowing how these things work in Israel, um, his solution for the conversion problem in Israel, what needs to happen in order for his solution to be applied? Is it a government issue? Yes. Is it a government Great issue? question, too. Mishuel, uh, the moment, Bezat Hashem, if Rabbi Amsalam comes back to the Knesset with more power, with more mandates, with his own party, uh, they'll have the opportunity through ministries like the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs uh, to make those changes and to appoint different types of rabbis into the rabbinut, to depoliticize the rabbinate, uh, remove it from the uh, complete control of one very, very small population that has taken, that has basically hijacked the whole of the Rabbanut all over the place. That's the change that there is. So it's largely done through, you know, there's not a separation of religion and state when it comes to those issues in Israel. And so, yeah, it is a political question uh, to be able to change the Rabbanut. So that, that's how it works. Let's take just a couple more. Last question, because we don't Marsha. We spoke about that with the consul today. Yeah. So with the women at the yeah. Let's that consul and the shot a cotel העולם החרדי זה 800 אלף איש, גיור, גזירה ישראל זה 400 אלף איש, מתינות דתית וקירוב לאורות נוגע לאלפים. אני עוסק בכך, בזה אני עוסק. אינני עוסק בדברים שהם באמת איזוטריים, שרק מחפשים כותרות מכאן ומכאן, וזה מיותר. בואו נלך לאורו של הרב עוזיאל, בואו נקרב אחד את השני, בואו נפיל את המחיצות, בואו לא ננסה לחפש נושאים על מה לריב. תאמינו לי, יש לנו הרבה מאוד אויבים מבחוץ, עדיף שנסתדר קודם כל בתוכנו. Beautiful closing words. Um, he said, you know, we have issues, and he goes, what, what he pr prefers to deal with, he understands that this is a tremendous problem, but what he prefers to deal with is, when he talks about the conversion problem, we're dealing with 400,000 people. When we talk about the question of Haredim having to go to the army and to go to work and to stop receiving government subsidies and taxpayer money to support uh, the Torah study, you're talking about 800,000 people. When you're talking about religious tolerance, you're talking about you know, the entire state of Israel and maybe even beyond. And these are the larger questions that he wants to deal with. He says he, at this time, uh, does not take positions on what he calls, um, you know, smaller, more, you know, esoteric issues to this side or to this side. And uh, that, you know, these issues sometimes get blown out of proportion and are turned into something much larger. And he says, let's perhaps go in the spirit of Rabbi Uziel and first try to unify ourselves to see where we could agree together and sit down and agree to disagree in a, in a civil way with civil discourse so that uh, we will really be able to carry ourselves forward and, uh, with, and remove from amongst ourselves the machloket, the divisions that seem to plague us so often. I think that's a beautiful note uh, with which to end. I want to thank Rabbi Amsalam for being with us for these few days. And uh, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back at the movies again tomorrow, and Thursday, and Sunday. Uh, have a great week. Shavuot Tov, everyone. Thank you.